Hello. Hi guys, it's Kimmy here. Let me try to get everything set up here. Hi Lori, I see you. Okay. Let me just make sure everything's working here. You can see everything okay. Okay. All right. So, um, we're going to, this is our first Crafting with Kimmy live session and I'm kind of excited about it, but I'm also kind of nervous. Hi, Bobby. Hi, the circle guru. <laughs> I don't know all your names, but, um, hi, Tangi. Um, so we're going to do our first Crafting with Kimmy live and um, I thank you so much for joining it, joining me. I'm going to try to do this fairly quickly. Um, I'm not a fast colorer and um, I think I forewarned you I'm not, I'm nowhere near the level of uh, coloring skill that a lot of the design team has but I wanted to to um, play along with you and um, we'll see how it goes. So um, I think everybody um, that's joining me, you can, uh, I started a group on Facebook, um, an event page letting you know about this event. And so um, what I mentioned was we'll be using this Happy Winter Days stamp set. It's one of the new stamp sets by um, Becky Pierce. And um, you were able to purchase the supplies ahead of time if you wanted to, or you can play along with whatever um, uh, paper you happen to have. And I'll give you the measurements of everything. It's a simple A2 sized card. I wanted to start out fairly easy so that, um, so, oh, you love the fox? Yeah, me too, he's super cute. Um, and so I guess we can just get started. I think I mentioned what you needed to do ahead of time was um, uh, stamp out your fox and stamp out the wreath. And I'm using Copic markers. You can use whatever medium you want to use. I'm using the Copic markers, so I stamped mine in the Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And so I asked you to stamp out the fox and then fussy cut the image. So just um, trim uh, fairly closely around the outside of the image or you can trim right up to the image It's totally up to you um, the, I like that these images um, the newer images by Becky and some of the ones by uh, Emily are really easy to fussy cut if you want to do that um, they're not you know really intricate images so you can um, fussy cut them really easily also um, I'll tell you a secret I just bought the uh, brother scan and cut so they're even quicker now <laughs> so so I can cut a whole bunch out at a time and that's what I've done um, if I find if I design a card that I want to make a bunch of I tend to stamp a whole bunch out so that I have um, a lot in case I mess one up or I just want to duplicate it so that's what I've done. So I asked you to fussy cut the fox and then stamp the wreath and then cut it out with a circle, whether you have a circle, a spellbinder circle or, um, you know, the old uh, creative memory circle um, tracing uh, utensil tool that you can use. Um, I used a spellbinder and I believe it's actually two two and three quarter inches across. That's the size I use that, that fit the, um, the wreath. So that's what I'm gonna use. So, um, and I also mentioned the markers that I'm gonna be using. I did color them up ahead of time. So I, and I posted the picture on there so you can see. And uh, these, this is what we're gonna be coloring up here. So I'm gonna try, I, I'm a very, fairly slow, colorer if that's a word um, so if you want to go ahead and color quicker or if you've already colored it up ahead of time that's fine too I'm gonna try to color fairly quickly here um, so first we'll start off with the fox now normally a fox is uh, you know sort of a reddish color I would probably use like e17 18 19 those sorts of colors but the paper that I chose to use and if you got the supplies um, from me you have these um, in your hands um, this is uh, it's, it's an older um, line uh, it's called bundled up and so it's got pinks and browns in it so I thought we'd color up the fox in the browns so the colors that I chose were um, E31 and E55 and then also E57. So we'll start off with the E31 and um, 
Now this is just the way I color. Not everybody colors like this. Um, some people color dark to light. Some people light to dark. Um, some really, hi Melanie. Um, some people really, oh yeah, sure. Melanie comes in to watch when I'm coloring. That's fair. <laughs> um, some people like to really blend in their colors. Um, others like to leave sort of a sketchy look. Um, other people like to do a fur technique. I don't do anything really super fancy. Um, so what I'm going to do is just color in this is the E31 and I'm coloring in just a, a real quick base uh, color on all the areas that I'm going to color brown so I'm using the E31 and if you're coloring al along um, that that's the color that I'm using hi Tr oh hi Trina's in here too cool um, and then so I'm just laying down a quick color because I'm going to go over it again with other colors. Now, you can color in circles. Uh, you can color, some people color in different sections. Um, I'm kind of nervous here, so my hands are kind of shaking. <laughs> so um, this probably isn't going to be my most beautiful creation, but you know what? It's fun, and we're going to try it out together. So I did the upper part of his head and then his tail section here and then the rest of his body at the bottom. And I'm thankful that it's quiet because I have the puppies down here. So as long as nobody rings the doorbell, we should be okay. You love the clear stamps, Melanie? I, me too, I'm just really loving them. Um, so now I'm gonna take the E55 and I'm just gonna add a little bit of shading at the bottoms of his ears. And then come in at the sides here. And then under his hat, maybe a little bit. I hope everybody can see okay. I gotta pay attention and make sure that you guys can see, sorry about that. Okay, and then up from his nose here. And his tail. And under his scarf. And I mean, you uh, you can color and shade however you like, um, whatever works for you. My nails are fabulous, thanks Melanie. They're still wet because I just did them so that my my hands didn't look too terrible. Okay, so I'm just adding a little bit of, really, just a little bit of extra shading, nothing fancy. Then E57, now it's quite dark, so what you can do, and Melanie is really good for this, she does tip to tip um, blending. So there's quite a jump between the 55 and the 57. So I, now I haven't done this, I didn't do this on the other one, but I'm going to do a little, try to do a little bit of the tip to tip so it's not quite as dark. So I'm taking, I'm holding the E57 and taking the E55 and just um, rubbing on it just a little bit, just so that it adds a little bit of the E57. And like I said, this is just, we're just sort of playing here. So how many people are coloring along or are you too busy coloring to comment? You need to try the tip to tip, yeah. I don't do it very often just because I'm usually, I, I don't try a lot of new techniques just because I, when I actually get the time to color, I, um, you're new to coloring. Kimmy Sue is new to coloring, neat tip. Yes, it is a great technique. Um, so that way, if you've got a couple of markers, you know, you don't have, you don't need to have all the, um, the colors of the Copic markers. So you can um, make your own colors by doing the tip to tip technique. And that way it's not too super, super um, dark and like a really big uh, jump from color to color. So I'm doing that again at the bottom and then at the bottom of his tail. I know you can't 
my hand's probably in the way a bit. Okay, so that's the E57, E55. And then I would probably just uh, scribble it off a bit just to make sure you don't have the dark on there anymore. And then I'll, I'll go back and go over a bit with the, the E55 to um, bring out the uh, E57 there a little bit further and make a, a better sort of blend. Like I said, this is not, none of this is hard and fast rules. You can play around and I'm sure there are lots of better colorers and um, coloring videos out there for sure. I know that a lot of the girls on the team have done some coloring videos and they're just fabulous. They're on our YouTube channel if you ever want to um, take a look. Yeah, I'm excited to see what everybody makes. And that's the thing, we're all making, um, you know, a similar creation, but everybody's um, designs are going to look a little bit different. So I'm gone back to the E31 and sort of blending everything out here. Like I said, I'm no professional, but these are just, this is how I color. I tend to do a circular motion in the bigger areas, just because it uh, you don't get those lines really. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. It, you can go back in and add some more shading if you want to. Um, I'm just going to, this is what I'm gonna end up with. Just, I'm taking the lightest one and going over the whole thing. Now, some people go dark to light and they don't um, even touch their light to their dark or, or blend them in as such. They leave really defined sections between, but this is what I'm gonna do. You're, you have to go, Lori. You're gonna watch the replay later. Okay, yes, I will definitely, I'll be posting this um, in the group um, later on when I'm done. Okay, so we've um, d used the browns on the brown section, the furry section of the um, fox, and now I'm just gonna use, I tried not to use too many colors just in case um, some people don't have all the colors or, um, oh, thank you for the hearts. Um, uh, so what I did was I, I'm only using E41 for in the um, eye and ear area of the fox. So I'm just using E41 and coloring the whole area, just doing a quick base coat. And the great thing um, that I love about the Copic markers is that um, you can go over it again and it makes it darker with the exact same marker. So you don't have to have every single, I mean, it's wonderful to have every single marker that they make, but you don't need it. Don't tell my husband I said that. So this is the E41 and mine actually looks like it's drying up a bit. Um, see how it's got a bit of a white tip there? That means I need to refill it. So I, good thing I've only got a little area to do here. So then I would just go over a little bit with um, the same marker, which is the E41, just where I might want a little bit uh, darker shading. You could use the E42 if you wanted to add some more shading. You almost can't even really see, um, see because it is such a light marker. You almost can't even really see it in person you can but I'm just adding a little bit of shade around the top of the eye section and then at the bottom of the ear section. So that's E41. Um, then I love the reds with Copic markers. I love that they start really light and you can use just a little bit of um, dark to really make it pop and stand out. Here's the one I did uh, and I posted it yesterday or the day before maybe. Um, and so we're gonna do that and we're just gonna do his hat and his scarf. And the, the markers that I chose, flip them around again, are E35. Just tap your screen to send hearts. Oh, okay, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to crank my head and read what you're writing as well. So we got R35 and R37 
and the R39. So these are all in the same, in the 30s. Um, so that makes sense. But um, like I said, you could use R24, 27, 29, or something like that. Totally up to you. Um, I like the this um, combination that goes um, with the reds in the, um, the bundled up paper. So we'll start with the R35, it's the lightest. And we're just gonna do this section in here quickly. Um, I always, here's another little tip, I always do, if I know I'm going to use red on my um, design, on my image, I always do, um, I always do the red last because it does have, it is very, a very strong color. And if your the tip of your marker of another color touches it, chances are it's going to drag it into the, the um, section that you're coloring. So I try to use the red last. Oh, and then I lied because I haven't done his nose and his paws. We'll do that in a minute. So then I'm taking, so I did a base coat of the um, R35 and then the R37, just adding a little a little section of shading. So just right here where it folds over and at the bottom. And then I'm going to um, brush it towards the top because it's going to be darker at the bottom here. And then under the, um, at the scarf here, so under his neck and then towards the center and then from the center towards the bottom on the side of a scarf. Okay, and then you take the darkest color, which is the R39. Oh, I keep, I keep moving low, sorry. So um, the R39 is the darkest, so I'm just gonna add a very little bit right where it creases and at the bottom. Now those that are really good at folds and clothing and stuff can do a much better job adding creases and stuff than I can, but I'm just gonna do my best here. And so I'm just doing a little bit and then I'm gonna add like a little bit, a little line so that it looks like there might be a fold in his scarf there. And again, a little bit here with the darkest color. So then I would go back with the R35 and sort of spread it out a bit. I like the color difference between the R35, um, 37, and 39. It's a nice um, spread between colors. Okay, so there's the red section. You could go in and add a little bit more shading if you wanted, but that's how I'm going to leave him. Um, and then uh, I added, I used um, E57 alone, just by itself, on the nose and his little feet. Now, to leave a little bit of a highlight, um, I would just color um, his nose all except for a little white spot. You could go back in with um, the white Sharpie poster paint marker and um, add a little dot if you wanted to do it that way instead over top of the marker. Um, and then I'm just going to add the E57 on his feet here. And like I said, you can go in and add with the same color, just make it a little bit darker. It makes it, every time you go over it, apparently it makes it 10% darker in that section. So you can add as much as you would like. So that's him all colored up. Now, well, I know I take forever when I'm coloring, so I'm sorry about that. But um, here's the wreath. And so uh, we've already cut him out with, I used a spell binder. Um, but what's going to happen is we're going to pop that piece on top of the um, pink mini doily that um, you would have had in your supply kit. So um, the colors that I used for the wreath... Now, like I said, I colored it up uh, a couple days ago. This is the original. And so this is what it's gonna look like when it's done. So I used, for the greens, I used G16 and G28. And that's the um, the whole, the, the back um, piece of the, the wreath itself, all the green sections. So I'm going to try to do this quickly. It normally takes me forever because I um, am not a real, quick colorer, but you're going to color in all the section um, around the ornaments and the bow. That's what takes so long when you're trying to get around the ornaments. But I'm doing just a base coat of the G16. Um, there are a couple of Gs that are really close to the, to the G16 color. 
um, G17 is close and G19 is a little bit darker but it's fairly close as well and you can see I've already gone outside the lines because I'm trying to do this too quickly. Um, of course you can use your colorless blender to take out any um, mistakes or sections that you've colored in by mistake. Um, do you know this tip as well? Uh, <laughs> a couple of girls on the design team and I myself have done this. Um, if you accidentally color a section the wrong color, um, I know I have done it and I know other people have done it too. You go to color a section and you've got all these markers out and you grab the wrong one and it's too dark or too light or well too light you could fix but too dark or it's like totally the wrong color. Um, you can uh, just as you would paper piece um, an image uh, like clothing or whatever you can also paper piece um, a section that you've accidentally colored. Um, the wrong color. So you could just stamp it out again and color it in the correct color. <laughs> who does that, Melanie? Actually, I was, um, you know who I'm talking about. Um, I'll tell you a little story quickly while we're coloring. Uh, Melanie has been on the design team for years. And when I had the design team call, um, Melanie actually told me this story ages afterwards. But she told me that um, the image that she was coloring up was Charlotte. I don't know if you remember that image. She's the girl with the really, really curly ringlet hair um, who's holding some dolls. And she kind of looks like she's um, having a rough day. <clears throat> anyway, Melanie told me uh, months after the fact that she colored up um, Charlotte and she was coloring, I think it was her dress in reds. And she dropped either a red or a pink marker and it landed on Charlotte's face after she'd already colored it all up. <laughs> yup. And um, so what she did, because she'd already colored, you know, uh, almost the whole image. And instead of starting over, which if you know Melanie takes her a day and a half to color an image red right smack on her eyeball yeah um and so what she did was she stamped the image again and uh just paper pieced her face just colored the face and this time didn't um drop a marker on it and then cut it out and paper pieced it on top of the image she'd already colored up so there you go so that's the G16, uh, colored up the um, wreath, and then I took the G28 um, and just uh, flicked in from the outside just to add a, um, so that you have a little bit of a highlight in the middle um, where the light uh, would hit. So I'm gonna try to do this really quickly. I can't promise it's gonna turn out beautifully because I'm trying to do it quickly. Um, there are a lot of great greens um, in the uh, Copic marker catalog or line or whatever. Um, these are from the G family. There are also some really great YGs, which are the yellow greens. I like a lot of them as well. But th this is the combination that works best for the paper that we're using. And like I said, if you're using... Um, your own patterned paper at home. Just use whatever markers um, you feel uh, match your or coordinate with your paper. So this is the G28. I will tell you <clears throat> that uh, I'm having a hard time with my hands. So um, I just I just uh, found out that I have um, ugh, tendonitis in my hands and my wrist and my elbow and my shoulder. So coloring, I have to color, um, I can't color a lot at one time. Of course, all the work on the website with, you know, using the mouse is not, doesn't work very well. Doesn't really help, but, so my hand tends to cramp up. So we've shaded from um, using the G28 
um, so we flicked inwards from the outside and then um, inwards from the inside and I'm going to add a little bit of shade around the bow as well because it's going to be have a little bit of a shadow there. Oh, I'm coloring outside the lines. I'm so sorry. Um, and then you can go back if you wanted and um, flick a little more to the inside uh, and blend it in a little more. Um, I'm just going to do a very little bit here just so you can I'm sure if you're coloring along, you're probably quicker than I am. And a lot of times I find when I'm coloring an image, I don't like the way it looks right off the bat when it's just sitting there. But once all the pieces are together on my card, I really like it. It all sort of fits together. So that's um, done with the green. So we're going to go back and use um, the reds and then the pinks for the ornaments that we've got on the wreath. So the ornaments, um, the red ones, we're going to use the red colors we already had. And then we're also going to use our 81, 83, and 85. So you just pick and choose which ones you want to use. Um, with the lightest color, I'm just going to do a quick... Um, a quick base color. You don't have to do a lot. Just go in and scribble with the lightest color doing the whole um, ornament. And then you take the next darkest, which is the R83. And I'm going to do sort of a crescent shape so that the top um, little section of your ornament has only the R81 showing, so it's the lightest section. So it's gonna sort of make it look like it's shiny or that there's light shining on it. And then the R85, just using, just doing a little bit at the bottom, like a little bit of a C shape. And if you want, you can go back with um, the R83 and just spread it out a bit, leaving just a section at the very top um, as lighter. Like that. And then we're using the reds that I showed before, so R35. I'm um, doing a base coat on the I sound like I'm painting the base coat um, on the remaining ornaments. So you're just going to do one quick layer. And then the R37 is next. So do a, like I said, sort of a crescent shape, leaving the top section light. Gosh, I don't even want to guess how long this video is. Like that. And then R39. Oh, again, I moved. I'm sorry. Just shout at me or ding at me or whatever when you can't see the image. So, and then just do a little swipe at the bottom with the R39 of the red ones here. Just like that and then you might go back with the <clears throat> R37 or R35 just to sort of even it out spread it out a bit just like that and then the last part is the um, bow oh I'm sorry I missed what somebody said something and I missed it <clears throat> So just doing a base coat or first layer with the R35 and then R37 and you're just going to add a little bit of shading. So inside the fold of the bow and then spreading it out and then coming down the bottom here under the bow like that. And then go back with your R39 and add a little bit more shade, a little bit darker. Like 
and then go back with the R35 and finish it up. Just like that. Okay, so sorry that took so long, but here, so we've got our two pieces finished. So we did the um, fox and the wreath. Um, Fussy cut the fox and a circle, uh, uh, cutting it out, cut out the circle. Cut out the wreath with the circle. <laughs> okay, and I've left these sections white for a reason, so we'll decide what we're gonna do with that um, in a minute. So then you're gonna take your two paper, uh, your two patterned papers that I, I sent you. So I've already used, um, this is, I think it's Stampin' Up! Crumb Cake or whatever craft that you have. And so I've um, already cut it and scored it for you. It's just an A2 sized card. So it's 11 inches long and four and a quarter wide and then fold it um, at five and a half. So that's the base. And then I also gave you this, um, I think it's called Blushing Bride from Stampin' Up! I love the Stampin' Up! cardstock because it's so thick and um, uh, it scores well and it stands up well and it's great for bases and matting and everything. So then, so what I did was I cut the pink slightly smaller at, um, I usually do it in increments of three eighths. So three eighths in from your four and a quarter and your five and a half. And then these are the two pattern papers. This is three eighths smaller than the pink. Um, so this is the side we're going to use, and then this is the um, the same width, this section here, and you can make it as wide as you want. I think I did one and a, one and three quarters, um, and then the matting for the one and three quarters is three eighths wider as well. Now, what I like to do, especially um, uh, these particular um, papers, they look sort of vintagey to me. So I'm going to use. I asked you to get. Um, uh, a vin like a distress ink, whichever, whatever color you'd like to use. This one that I'm going to use, um, obviously you can see that I use it a lot. This is the Walnut Stain, and I'm actually going to do it on my mat here. Um, I do. You, does everybody have one of these mats? I love, I love these. Um, I think it's a Tim Holtz mat, and I love to do my inking on it because um, I I tap the ink you can see it and then I start off the paper so that you don't have a, a, a real um, line showing on your paper so I start over here so a little bit of it comes off on the mat and it doesn't show a harsh line and then what you can do is when you're leaving some ink on the mat you can scoop up the extra go back and grab the extra does that make sense am I making sense so what I'm doing is just adding a little bit of the walnut stain ink around the edges of all the patterned paper. I'm choosing just to use the patterned paper. I know some people do um, the distressing on the cardstock as well or um, the white sections as well. You need one of these. The mat, Trina? Yeah, the mat is, I, I mean, I, I take it everywhere when I'm going cropping or whatever. It's just, it's fantastic and nothing sticks to it and um, it's, it's great. So I've done this section and then you're gonna go and do the larger section as well. And I love the walnut stain. It's one of my favorites. I also use Vintage Photo. Um, does anybody else? You distress everything with ink. I know you do, Melanie. Can you see this? Am I in the frame here? And I really like the new um, round uh, foam thingy. I don't know what it's called. The tool, the foam tool. I like the round as opposed to the rectangular because it seems to not um, leave harsh marks when you're using it. Okay, so I've done both patterned paper layers. Walnut stain is awesome. It's one of yeah, one of Melanie's um, favorites as well. So, so there you go. So I'm going to layer the um, uh, patterned paper, the the polka dotted pattern pat dauber dauber. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> Kimmy Sue says it's called a dauber. So there we go. Um, so I don't just call it a thingy what's it or a whatchamacallit. So I'm going to attach the patterned paper to the pink. Now I'm just going to use some quick adhesive here. 
What's everybody's um, favorite adhesive? What kind of um, adhesive do you use? Do you use double-sided tape? Do you use glue? Anyone? So I'm. what I'm using is, um, I got one of these at an event that I went to. Um, it was a crop and create event, and I really like it. I like that I generally use the um, tape that's like a tear and... Uh, it's double-sided. Yeah, you used double-sided tape. Yeah, um, and but I really like this because it's it's quick and easy to use, and I don't have to spend time um, uh, cutting and pulling away, and it's just really quick. So I'm going to use it now. So that's the base, Tombow glue. Yes, I know Melanie used this, the Tombow glue. I think it's the white glue with the green lid. Um, you have a little bit of everything. Yeah, me too. Um, and then we're going to attach the um, uh, piece at the bottom. And you don't need a whole lot. So I'm just going to eyeball it. And fit that there. Oh, oh, and it slides a bit. So it's not permanent, permanent. And then what you can do, what I do sometimes is if I have um, <clears throat> my pieces don't line up perfectly, see how there's a little bit of a pink edge there? I'll just trim it off quickly with my um, scissors. I have lots of different scissors. Um, I love, <clears throat> these are EK Success, um, but for like fussy cutting, I really like um, the Stampin' Up! paper snips. I love them. They, they're they they're really sharp and they get into all the little corners. I know some, some people use the cutter bee scissors, so it's whatever your prefer preference is. So here's the, I'm going to just put the base over there. So this is how it's going to um, look. This is a, it's a very simple layout, but it's an easy one that you can use again and again for different um, stamps, different papers, and it'll always look different. So then I gave you one of these. These are the mini doodle bug doilies. <clears throat> so you're going to take your um, wreath and attach it to the mini doily. And again, you don't have, you don't need a whole lot of adhesive <clears throat> so just center it where you'd like it oh see what I did oh that was not smart see the only thing about using the mat and ink is that it leaves ink on there and if you put your paper down before the ink is cleaned off with a baby wipe or spray or whatever you can get it on your hands and on your pretty just colored images so you can do one of two things this one got some brown on it around the edges. So sometimes what I like to do is if I've used a spell binder, I'll put it back in the spell binder and then um, add a little bit of um, ink, a little bit of distress around the edges as well. This is not turning out quite as I had hoped, but You have to make lemonade out of lemons. So. so that's one way of doing it. And then when you pop it off, there's a white frame around it. Or you can take <clears throat> the one that you did earlier. Here we go. This one's nice and clean. And put it on your, I hope I don't have ink on my fingers. How many, how many people have done that before? You had ink on your fingers, black or brown, and picked up an image and got ink all over it? Anyone? Always be flexible in card making. Yep, there's always a way to fix things. So I just adhered it to the pink um, doily. And then I'm going to take these two pieces here. And the way I want, this is the my idea for laying it out. You can change it up and do whatever you like. But I had this in the middle here and then this here. And I'm going to stamp... Um, one of the sentiments that comes with the um, uh, Happy Winter Day stamp set. So I think I'm going to use the Wishing You Warm Memories. <clears throat> so if you have an acrylic block, just grab one of your sentiments. <clears throat> Put it on your acrylic block. And I always use the VersaFine ink when I'm doing sentiments. It does take a long time to dry, so try not to smudge it. 
um, or do it last so that you can set it aside. But I think um, it's such a, um, a thick ink. It's a pigment ink and um, it just sh gives a, a real sharp um, uh, image, which is exactly what you want when you're using um, uh, sentiments, when you're doing um, wording. So I'm going to stamp it just at the bottom here. Like that. Can you see that? Okay. So um, we're going to set that aside. And <clears throat> so I've got, this is the way it's going to lay out like this with this um, bar at the bottom. So I'm going to attach it as well. And like I said, you can you can make the design however you would like. This is just what I came up with ahead of time. Um, then I also gave you some of this um, linen thread, which is I love it because it's it's um, not as thick as the twine, and it's a natural color, so it goes with everything. And so I gave everybody a length of the twine, and um, so I want to put it around this section here. So now when I'm doing twine or linen thread or uh, jute cording or whatever, I always um, have it go around at least twice, sometimes three times. So this one, I'm going to do it twice. And I'm going to tie it a little over to the left. And with the um, best twine ever. Um, so with this, what's great with the skinny twine is that you can tie a knot in it first. Um, I find with the thicker twines that it's hard to tie it in a knot and then tie a bow because it makes it too bulky. So I really like this twine for that and it is in the shop if you want to grab it. And I have it set so that you get 10 yards. So if you order one, uh, if you the just the increment of one, then you will get 10 yards and it's very inexpensive. So, so I'm just going to tie the bow there. You could um, add a charm or something if you wanted. And I'm just going to trim it off there. So that's the way that looks. And then I'm going to attach it to the base. I'm sure this is all, you know, not very exciting for you. All you people that are card makers have been doing this for years and you're like, Kim, you're not telling me anything I don't know. But I love um, playing along with everybody and I love doing classes and you can always learn something new. And if you have a tip, feel free to shout it out because I'm sure we probably haven't heard of it or you've got some ideas that we haven't heard before. So, so you're just attaching the base or the um, pink layer to the card base. Does, don't those colors go so nicely together? And then, I'm a great teacher. What are you talking about? Um, so then we're going to take this layer that we already did up. So it's got the colored wreath on it and the doily. And I want to, um, I'm going to attach it flat. And then we'll pop dot the, um, the uh, fox. So we're going to attach the wreath at the top in the middle. And then um, I'm not going to attach the fox just yet because I want to do a couple different things. I'm not sure how I want to do uh, this, how I want to do the white section. So I'm going to do a couple of different things. The, um, first of all, I'm going to try the liquid applique. Um, I don't know if you've used it before. It's one of my favorite things for um, making 3D um, snow or um, the puffy sections on, on the Santa hats are perfect for that. Um, so I'll do one with the liquid applique and the heat gun. And then the other one I thought we'd uh, try the Wink of Stella um, glitter brush because I love the sparkle that it gives. So actually, I forgot to color the tip here, of the, t um, the tip of his tail. So I, I just used the E41 just like I did for these sections. So the area that we're going to do um, with the liquid applique or the wink of Stella is just the hat and the ball of the hat there. So 
Let's try the liquid applique first. Now, this is a new one. I haven't used it yet, so hopefully it works okay. So it's got a nice um, tip at the end there. It's like a fine tip, so you can get it exactly where you want it. There's a little section here. And then the circular ball at the bottom. Now, you can always go in and add more liquid applique, but you can't take it away. So I'm just gonna start off with just a little bit here. And I'm gonna use my heat gun, so you probably won't be able to hear for a minute. So, uh, let's see how this, see if, it, if, see if you can see it pop up here. It's just gotta heat up for a second. I'll try to get it under the camera so you can see it. Okay, is that right? Hopefully it doesn't burn my thing. Oh, there it goes. That is so awesome. There. So did you see that? <laughs> so his hat is all nice and puffy now. So you can use that. I love liquid applique for adding snow. You could use it on the snow day stamp set where the girl is like snowboarding and the guy is falling down the hill. Isn't it awesome, Kimmy Sue? Yeah, it's pretty cool. And it's instant. It puffs up instantly. Um, so we'll do that with one of them. And then the other one I thought we'd use, the Wink of Stella. It is a fun effect. Um, so this is the Wink of Stella. Now you could have you could color underneath it if you wanted to um, add a little bit of gray um, to the that section but I'm just going to paint over it with the Wink of Stella brush oh and I unscrewed it instead of pulled it out okay so here we go and you can see the glitter is already can you see that the glitter is already on the end of the brush so I just scribble a little on the paper and then I'll go in and just really all you're doing is painting like you would with a paintbrush on his um, hat and and you really don't have to do anything um, if your um, if the paint or the sparkle doesn't seem to be coming out just off to the side not on your project but on the side squeeze it just a very very light hand um, and then it'll start flowing again but it, I haven't had to do that yet since I since I started using it and I just love the effect the sparkle it just gives so much sparkle and there are different colors that you can get it in this is the clear I don't know if you can see that, if I've got it in a spot where you can see the sparkle, but it's there, so it shows up really nicely. Now you could do um, the same thing with the ornaments. You could add sparkle to each of the ornaments. Um, I've seen some people use liquid pearls on each of the ornaments, so it looks really, really cool. And there's different things you can do with each. Um, like I said, you could add a charm, you could add some brads, um, some uh, enamel dots, whatever you prefer. So I'm gonna add the, um, the hat, the fox with the liquid applique hat, and I want to use pop dots. So I'm going to put them about here. So I'm just going to add some pop dots at the bottom and maybe in his ears. You don't need a whole lot, but you want to make sure that you're putting the pop dots um, in a section that's not like you don't want to put them on top of your um, twine there. So the twine, the liquid applique, the Wink of Stella, they're all in the shop there, as well as um, the stamp set that we're using, the Winter Days. I've got it on special right now in the shop, so you can um, grab it if you don't already have it. So there is my finished card. So I've used Craft, um, a light pink. I used uh, the Blushing Bride, and then these papers are called Bundled Up. And uh, Minnie wants me to pay attention to her, so I'd better hurry up. And I just added the sentiment with the um, VersaFine ink uh, on the bottom there, and I added some liquid applique to his hat. Or you could also use the, uh, you just love sparkly stuff? Yeah, me too. Anything you can add glitter to, I'm all for. So um, that's the Wink of Stella. So that is our finished card. I'm sure it probably took about an hour, but <laughs> I hope you had fun. So this was our first um, go at doing the Crafting with Kimmy live and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm already thinking about doing another one in um, probably three weeks so as soon as I um, I've picked out the paper but I haven't decided on the stamp set yet so um, these are the papers that uh, I was looking at. I hope you like them. 
Um, they're by Bow Bunny, and um, there's uh, there's mittens, and it's got like an off-white tone to it, and I love the snowflakes there. So um, these were the colors that I was going to use, and I'm trying to decide, maybe you can help me decide, um, either the Snow Buddy stamp set, because I think it would be fun to um, make the snowman all sparkly, or um, the new uh, One Cup at a Time stamp set. So we can do some fun things with the cups, or maybe we could do more than one. But um, I think I, uh, I'll make a decision and I'll let you know and then I will put the stamp set on special and I'll come up with the supplies for it as well. And I'll let you know as soon as it comes in. Yeah, I love Bow Bunny too. Oh, you love Snowman? Okay, so what I'm going to ask you is you can leave a comment on here or I'm going to post the video um, in the uh, Facebook group, in the Crafty Friends group. Um, so you can leave a comment underneath as to which stamp set you'd like me to use and um, if if you enjoyed yourself. So thanks so much for coming and hanging out with me and I hope this wasn't too painful and uh, maybe we'll do it again soon. Thanks so much. Thank you. Looking forward to the next video. Oh good, I'm so glad. Okay, we'll see you soon.